the talk all throughout the Ravens fan base this week, despite the win, uh, has been, of course, about Justin Tucker's 66-yard field goal, Lamar Jackson's fourth and 19 conversion of Sammy Watkins. But one of the biggest and most outrageous conversations this week has been about Hollywood Brown and those drops. And those drops, of course, they contributed to this game and changed it from being a blowout to being an extremely close, stressful, just insane game. Uh, and we're happy that the Ravens got out of there with a win, but it could have went either way. Uh, but with Hollywood, the Ravens had a presser today, and he, for the first time, well, for the first time uh, professionally, because he talked about it briefly on his uh, Twitch channel. Uh, and he joked around about it. He, he joked around with our guy Simply AS10. He like, man, Simply, I got my notice turned on for you. And I saw that you put me on blast with the highlight video. It drops. I was like, come on, man. But he, he was he was lighthearted about it. And I, I really appreciated that. But today, uh, the Ravens in the presser, he took the questions head on. And the first question that Hollywood got asked. We know what happened in the Lions game. We know that he had to go extra hard in practice this week. The first question that he was asked. So, uh, do you think it's long overdue that Justin Tucker finally got a 99 in Madden? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good, man. But he said, yeah. And maybe because he's a Madden player, you know, he'd be stringing Madden on his Twitch and stuff like that. But anyway, on to Hollywood. Uh, they asked him about Lamar Jackson and, and how he's been this season. And Hollywood said he's been looking good this season. Because they asked him how it was to have him back at practice since, of course, he's missed the last two days uh, with the back and whatnot. And, of course, everybody been talking about, oh, it's because he's been carrying the team. Anyway, um, Hollywood said he's been very precise this year. And that's a very, very good word to use. Because for the most part, he has been. He has been very precise. Uh, but anyway... Um, they asked him about about his bounce back game. How, how do you bounce back from something like that? How, what do you do? Like after having three huge drops, game changing. How do you bounce back from that? Uh, and he said, and they asked him, do you do anything different in practice? And he just said, just go back to work. He said, we're not going to let one game deteriorate our plan for the season. And, and that's been a lot of the Ravens motto this year. Them just the focus that they, they, they have continued to put the focus on the bigger picture, not highlighting one play, not highlighting uh, individuals, but just focusing on team and bigger picture. And that's what you got to do. Now, of course, if there's anything that you do good at, you want to try to do it even better. If there's something that you do bad, then you want to improve on that for sure. So, you know, they're working on themselves, but, you know, that focus is on the bigger picture as it should be. Uh, he said he was happy to have. Uh, Rashad Bateman and Miles Boykin back, and he's, he's happy to see what the offense looks like with them. And whenever they do come back, I, I don't think Rashad Bateman is going to come back this week. I think it's a much much higher chance that Boykin comes back this week, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but whenever they do come back, it it should open up this offense that much more. It, it really should. Uh, and the Ravens will have some nice little depth at receiver. Uh, and it's all it's all about how they use them at that point. How they use the guys who they have now and how they use the even more guys when they get even more. So we'll see how Giro operates when that goes down. Um, he they, he was asked, did he give Rashad Bateman like any advice as being a rookie and then getting injured early on? And well, well, what advice did he have for Rashad Bateman? And he said that he told Rashad Bateman to keep tunnel vision. Shout out to Kodak Black. Uh, and he said, don't listen to outside noise. And you know with Hollywood, it... I mean, you know, with really anything, anything you do, especially if you have a, a job that's on public display, there's going to be a lot of outside noise because since your job is available to the public, then that allows the public to criticize you, to talk about you, whether good or bad. That just allows you to be spoken about. So it can be easy to sort of pay attention. You pay attention to the support. And they can also pay attention to the hate as well. But Hollywood telling Rashad Bateman to keep that tunnel vision, that's important. Uh, because that means just stay in focus. Don't listen to all that outside stuff. Stay focused on what you need to do so you can get it done. Um, he said that, uh, and Jameson Hensley had tweeted this shortly before the press of the day, that he said he was working with uh, catching the soccer balls after practice. 
And they were like, is that something that you uh, suggested? And they were like, no, that, this is what, um, I think it was Keith Williams. The one, I think he was the one that, uh, that brought that drill to the Ravens. I'm pretty sure it was Keith Williams. Uh, anyway, they asked him, how does he get past the bad mentally? How does he get, how does he get past the bad plays mentally? Uh, and he said, you just can't dwell on the past and you just got to move on. But the one thing that I, I really appreciated about that, his response was he said that you can't dwell on the past and you, you just got to keep it moving. But he said that's whether it's a good play or a bad play. And I appreciated that a lot. Reason being because if you go out there, you make a big play. Oh, you're going to be happy. You're going to be feeling yourself a little bit. You're going to go ahead and celebrate. You're going to go ahead and do your little first down mark. If you score a touchdown, you're going to do whatever your celebration is. You can walk out with your chest out a little bit more. Like, oh, yeah, I got it. And that's cool temporarily, real quick. But you got to get right back to it the next drive. And if the next drive you go out there and you're feeling yourself and then you drop it or you fumble it or you lose it, so you do something bad. It's like, oh, so you could take yourself through this crazy range of emotions. And, and, and it's always important. This, this is in life, too. It, it's important in life, too, more so in life than football, of course, that you never get too high on yourself, but you also never get too low. So you, you don't want to be a, a, a cocky, arrogant person, but you also don't want to be somebody that's overly critical of yourself and just always down on yourself. So that that is an important lesson, just like I said, in life, period, not even just football. But like we talked about before, a lot of stuff uh, with football, it applies to life uh, as well. It's always a lesson to be learned. Um, and he also talked about uh, about all the hate on social media. I think it was Clifton Brown that asked this question. But he said, well, how do you feel about all the hate on social media? Because, you know, there is a lot of hate on there. And like we always say, social media is a gift and a curse all at the same time. It's a gift and a curse uh, because it can be used for good. You could connect with people all across the world. You could just make so much business stuff happen. You can see your friends and family and see what they up to and da, 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 da. But then at the same time, it does allow you to connect to people all over the world. And sometimes some, some people ain't the best people to be connecting with. So he said that with social media, um, and, and I think Clifton asked him too, do you just like get off of social media for a while? He said, I'm on social media all the time. And he said, I, I'm on there. I, I, I laugh with him a lot. And he said, I put myself in their shoes. Like, hey, they, they could be like, man, I got this guy in fantasy and he out here doing that stuff. He said he laughed with him. So he said he, he, he reads everything. He sees everything on social media. And he just, he laughs. And he said he does not take it too serious. And that is so important for anybody. Again, Football, not just football players, but just in life. It's important that you don't take social media too seriously. What a lot of people tend to do, and this is kind of sidetracking a bit, but it's important that we say this. Uh, what a lot of people tend to do when it comes to social media, they might be looking if they're on Instagram or YouTube or wherever they might be. And they may be, oh, man, wow. Oh, they're doing this. Oh, they're doing that. Oh, wow. They got this. They got that. <sighs> I don't have it. I don't have that. Oh, man, I wish I had that. I should have that. Man, what? <sighs> Their lives are better than mine's. Because they have this, they have that. And, and that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. That's one of the worst parts about social media. Because it's created so many different platforms where uh, people look at other people and, and they wish that they were them. And they try to have what they have and obtain what they got. And then, then they turn into jealous and then they start feeling down on themselves. And it, it could just be a lot of negative on it. It's not all negative. It all Again, it all depends on how you use it. And like they always say, well, most people with social media, you cannot go by that for their lives. Because they only put the good out there. They won't talk about or put the bad up there. They only put out the good. So it's just with social media is something that you just got to always be mindful of. Um, but again, he did talk about how he doesn't take it too serious. That's okay, cool, Hollywood. Now, they asked him what happened on those plays. What happened on the, what, 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 what went down on those drops? And um, he just said that it's unacceptable. He ain't say that it was one particular thing. He said it could have been a couple of different things, but he just said straight up, it's, it's unacceptable. And he said you don't ever want to drop a layup. And he said it could be a number of things, but it just can't happen regardless. So he let that be known. Like, I don't even care what it is. It just, it can't go down. And then um, he was asked about the ball, if, if the ball that he dropped in the end zone, 
if that had been deflected or not before it got to him. Because I know with uh, with Sammy Watkins, one of the, uh, the 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 drops that Sammy Watkins had, or the drop that he had down the sideline, great pass. And I said this during the game too. I said it was a perfect pass by Lamar, but the the cornerback just made an even more perfect play. That cornerback barely got to that ball, but he did tip it. So I that's why I didn't really uh count that as really a drop drop on Sammy Watkins. Um and I mean even the same thing could kind of be said about Hollywood with that drop in the end zone. It is a drop, but still like when the timing is thrown off, when you're expecting the football to come to your hands and then that timing is thrown off by a deflection, that's tough. That that's really tough. Um but I, I, I forgot about that one. But anyway, with Hollywood they asked if it got tipped before it got to him, if it got deflected before it got to him, and he said, it don't matter. That's it. Straight up, he just he said, it don't matter. So you could tell with Hollywood by his, um, <clears throat> his, his body language, his tone, the way he spoke about this, he was just ready to move on. He's ready to move on. He's ready to, on to the Broncos. That's it. On to the Broncos. He addressed it officially once and for all, but he was ready to keep it moving. And I'm, I'm sure we all are as well. So I know there's been like these drop, like the drops bring out a lot of crazy talk from people. Like first two weeks, everybody like, oh, yeah, Hollywood, this Hollywood, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, this past week, I'm, <laughs> he's just Marquise now. He's not Hollywood at all. I'm not calling that guy Hollywood. It's like so people could they could be so flip floppy, and I know again with with sports, a lot of people can get caught in the moment. And it can be very emotional and whatnot, and that's one of the most fun parts we love about sports. But at the same time, people they just sometimes they can think irrationally, and some people forget that at their jobs they're not perfect at their jobs every single day. Some people forget at their school they're not a perfect student every single day. Some people forget that just in their lives, they're not the perfect person every single day. We have bad days. Whether it be at work, school, just life in general. People have bad days and people are allowed to have bad days. I think some fans, they, they, they tend to forget that when it comes to some players. When it comes to a lot of players. Because they'll be ready to flip over tables and just toss everything, throw it all away, trade this guy, cut that guy, bench that guy because they had a bad day. Now, if we benched every single player every time they had a bad day, this team would be terrible. They'd be terrible. If we benched every single player right after they had a bad play, or even if they were even patient and were like, you know what, we'll give you two bad plays. And if you have two bad plays... We're benching you, buddy. Nobody would be out there. Lamar, he would have gotten benched. Hollywood, Sammy, every, everybody would be benched. Nobody would be safe. Because nobody plays perfect every single play. Well, Lamar was in, in the, the first three and a half quarters of that Lions game. But nobody plays perfect all the time. Everybody has bad plays. Everybody has a bad game once in a while. It, it happens. So the quicker that a lot of us understand and realize that, the better off mentally as a football fan you'll be. We out.